So, this movie is called Air Bud Spikes Back, which we thought was really funny because there's also Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. And we were going to do this huge intro, and there was going to be Star Wars jokes, but, man, we just don't have the energy anymore. This, this, this damn movie... <laughs> I'm emotionally dead inside. You yeah. can't make me do anything more for this. Anyway, welcome to Rough Cuts. <laughs> welcome to the podcast, everyone. This is Airbud 5, the fifth movie in the... I was going to say Marvel Cinematic Universe, <laughs> but I didn't because I'm not you. So I said... <laughs> you have Airbud. to keep this in. You can't just cut it to only when I make mistakes. That's, that's not fair. Cinematic Universe. I, I opened two beers and I had one sip in. This isn't how this works. God damn it. <laughs> this is a movie that is a television episode stretched out over an entire 90 minutes oh man it's and stretched. it's oh and even then the television episode is still split into two distinct movies there is a good half of this movie that's kind of interesting and unfortunately it is the much smaller portion mm. and then there is the family part of this movie which is total pablum and stretched out way too far if you were going to write a script for a Air Bud movie, you would have to hit a certain amount of goals, right? We would yeah. have to hit uh, the dog is introduced. In this case, there's actually history behind the dog because this is the fifth movie in the franchise, and the stories are somehow connected. Like, yeah, they kind of just assume universe. that you know a little bit. Yeah. So the dog's introduced. Family stuff happens. Dog needs to do sport for some reason, and then dog excels at sport. That's the general yes. formula, right? That's exactly the formula that you're looking at. That's pretty much for a lot of different kinds of movies around this time. So when did they introduce Wolverine in the Blob, and why wasn't it that formula? <laughs> <laughs> That's my they, question. <laughs> they introduced Wolverine in the Blob in the very credits of this movie. It started out right away. They had the royal flush... A uh, plumbing van, like right Which away. Which is Gambit, by the way. Yes. Yep. I the was whole... waiting for Patrick Stewart, but he didn't show up for some reason. He must have lost his invitation to the set. Yeah, it's not tied into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it's definitely tied into the X Men Cinematic oh, Universe for sure. And anyway, we're introduced to Wolverine and the Blob, which are our two bumbling idiot Home Alone crooks. I guess they're kind of crooks. They're more hillbilly X Men rejects. Yeah, they're, the Wolverine character has the most obvious false front like hillbilly teeth. They're great. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're so bad. They're amazing. There's some really good stuff with these two. Like, they're just very over the top and wacky. And just all of the, the stupid clown shoes stuff that you'd expect from a fifth sequel to Airbud. Like, it just it needs to be some wacky shit. And it was great. They're zany hijinks, by the way. They do set this up immediately. They are breaking into a museum to steal the Chaos Emerald that Barack Obama originally stole so he could become supersonic, which is now locked away in a museum in the Midwest in Portland. Yeah, the Endless Gemerald or whatever, yes. Yeah, it was really weird. And, and then they meet up with Paul Blart Mall Cop at the museum, who doesn't have a fart joke it gets so then... close. It got so close to fart joke. It tried really, really hard to get there. And instead, they did a lot of yeah. literal toilet humor. They had a plugged toilet. They were pretending to be plumbers. And they scope out the place to steal the gem. And, and when they're scoping out the place, we realize through movie magic that the gem is in an open room covered in Mission Impossible lasers that everybody can see with the naked eye. Okay, we yeah. have a setup for a zany heist movie, right? At this point, yeah, I was strapped in, ready to go. I was in for this movie. This was great. It was such over-the-top zany garbage with, like, a bunch of yeah. 
actors just chewing scenes everywhere. And they're so and they, over the top. It's great. They're so, they're so bad. Like, they know exactly what movie they're in. And so they look over here, they see that there's a grate, and they're like, oh, we can send something through the vents and get the, the Gemerald through that way. And, and because it's the Airbud universe, they are aware of the existence of Airbud, who also happens to randomly live in their town. And, yes. And they are trying to figure out what to do. But they don't actually see Airbud in a dog person uh, until later on in the movie. That yeah, they... that whole scene happens. Wasn't this movie about volleyball? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yes. Okay, hold up. That is a really good point. I totally forgot that's what this movie's about. Wait, what? Yeah, you're right. Where the fuck does that Wait. come in? These for you. How far in are we? Now we have to move on to some dumb bullshit that's to waste time <laughs> between the next scene that I actually care about. Right? God yes, fucking, I that's, am so bad at this movie. <laughs> that's all that this is. This is like... A minute and a half of goofy heist movie that looks somewhat interesting as a small child. And then we'll get, like, that minute and a half and immediately 20 minutes plus of just, like, really, really claustrophobic family conversations. And they're just the most low-energy, boring, flat shots in the universe. They're awful. Everything just feels very made-for-television, like, really tight shots of static people just talking at each other over and over and over and over. I, like I mean, this... it's not just them talking to each other. They're also talking about raising money like good kids by doing work like babysitting because you're a 13-year-old girl and dog sitting and all this other stuff because Girl 1, who is our main character, who I do not remember the name of at all, <laughs> Do you... Did she have a name? I, I. <laughs> she must have, right? I don't know. I don't know at all. I do not I remember have her name. No <laughs> idea. I. I don't. We didn't even give her a name. I tried to blank these people out. Yeah, I tried to blank these people out the <laughs> minute they showed up on screen. Yeah, these people even... are. I, these I people are human that. vanilla yogurt. We like did, we didn't even give her a name. <laughs> I have no idea who she is. Girl one, that's her name. Girl one. These are the vanilla yogurt Jesus of people. Christ. Like it's bad. <laughs> These people are so bland and flavorless. It is incredible. Speaking of bland and flavorless, this movie has a Baskin Robbins <laughs> sponsor. Oh boy, it doesn't <laughs> Which... Oh how it does. It does indeed. Every five minutes somebody has a Baskin Robbins ice cream in their hand. That whether it's the heist guys, like they have a small shot of the heist movie. They go back for a brief, brilliant moment to have the heist people again, just to have reaction shots of them with Baskin Robbins on right. stakeouts waiting for Airbud. It's great. I, I mean, it's not. It's not just you know Wolverine and the Blob with Baskin Robbins though. There's oh, no. another character which I fucking hate, which is our Dennis <laughs> the Menace slash Omen horror murder kid. <laughs> Which, yes, that's exactly what this small child is. And, and this kid, which is like three. You know that this is an actual human being, right? We just call him I mean, an omen that child. That doesn't change the fact that he's the omen child just because he's a doesn't. real human. Fuck. It, it really does. It doesn't at all. He is also the son of the director of this movie. 110% and Satan, he has to 100% be. the son of Satan. <laughs> Did you Who's see the one that made this movie? Like, like okay. <laughs> <laughs> the director of this movie is Satan, and his there, small there's, child. There's cute dog antics going on, and then this small child gets the, the camera panned over, and he's just looking fucking death stare at some child across the way. You're like, oh, that kid's dead. <laughs> that kid did not survive the shoot. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this, this kid's not acting in the slightest. No. It's just a little... It's all just reaction shots of an actual toddler just, like, seeing a dog. And he's just going, like, yay, puppy, and clapping his hands. And then they're like, okay, yeah. that's in the movie, I, I guess. I don't know. We had to put Jim in. It's, like, it's the director's kid. Like, yeah. put him in. That's We gotta do it. There's even this one point where the mom character's like, hey, Billy, how'd the day go? Oh, we did some stuff and stuff. 
and then just walks off scene. Like, they weren't done shooting the scene. The kid just fucking left. And then yes, it, it hard yeah, cuts to the mom, absolutely. like, oh, okay. <laughs> yep, yep. They ad-libbed every scene with this child. This child was just doing actual reaction shots to the adults, and they were just like, eh, oh that's God. fine, keep it in, it's good. Close enough. <laughs> this kid was awful. It was so bad. Every time he turned back on screen, I was like, oh, God, no, please, just Please get forward. this kid out of here. It was, and all of his scenes were absolutely extraneous. There was so much extraneous stuff in this movie. I kind of want to sum this part of the movie up as montage the movie. It's just so much filler. So she's got, like, a montage scene of her having fun with her friend, Mm -hmm. but then her friend moves away, and so there's a montage of the friend moving away, and then, like, they have, like, a memory box and whatever. We need need to summarize this a little bit better, though, because it's not just that she's talking to her friend and the friend's moving away. They're setting it up. The setup here is that she is growing up and her friends are disappearing. This is a normal thing that happens when kids grow up. Like, I I don't know if if your experience was like this, but when I grew up in school, I lived in a town that had an air base. That means most of the kids Mm. that went to my school immediately left the year after. (laughs) Yeah, it's all... So so they're trying to be uh, like, this is a family thing. All your friends will leave. You need to grow up and be a person and maybe you'll see them again someday. They're setting up that she's her best friend. They really, really are, you know, great together. They're they're going to see each other even after she moves. That's the setup. And this is a very weird corporate way to sell, like, growing up. And it doesn't really work. No. But they're yeah. trying? It, it tries to have a few little arcs for people, but it's done in a very superficial way, right? Like, it's yeah. kind of done checkmark, checkmark, checkmark. There's no real tension in the movie at any point. Like, the heist movie maybe a little bit, but that's mostly just played for laughs. And the whole family stuff just comes across really flat because it's just done on the most surface level way possible. Like, it's supposed to be about her friends moving away and her growing up. And then there's another arc for her a little bit later, kind of, of like the sports arc when we get to that. <laughs> there's multiple arcs to this movie. But yeah, well, there's no, a very she, uh, clear cut point in the film where it's suddenly a sports movie, but where it transitions, uh, yes. But so she's a she's having her friend move away, and so they have like kind of a montage of all those kinds of memories and like oh like she's growing up, and then they have montages of her trying to find a job. So then it's like mm-hmm. a montage of her finding trying to find a job, and then her um, having a pet sitting job. And then after that, the dogs all get loose because of the parrot, which is the other best part of the okay, film. This we is the only good part of the we family didn't, part. We didn't introduce the parrot. We didn't introduce the parrot. Okay. I forgot about so, that. Yes. Okay. The, what is happening is there is a neighbor. Oh, God. There is a neighbor slash. Keep that in. Keep grandma. It in there. Don't, don't Na- shoot it. Neighbor grandma? Is that. Uh, yeah, it's it really neighbor unclear. grandma. She has a parrot, which can definitely talk like a human and not like a parrot. (laughs) It's real good. And the parrot is somebody that she talks to a lot and carries with her on her shoulder, and it's actually really cute. That parrot also is kind of an asshole and kind of of the bringer of the end of days, which (laughs) matches up to the omen child that we were talking about earlier. And I'm starting to piece together, I need to get a whiteboard. One second. Do you have string? There's a lot of there's a lot of connections. Need, okay, hold on, hold on, on, hold on. There's <laughs> I need some string because we are matching omen child to demon parrot. Okay, so demon parrot <laughs> learns to meow because someone says meow to it, and then it just constantly is meowing. And it really no, it's because there's a well, way, there's a right? cat commercial. There's a oh, cat commercial a, in the background. I forgot. There was about a like really really commercial. bad. Yeah, there's a really, really bad jingle, like, cat commercial, like an old Meow Mix kind of commercial. They did it specifically for this movie. Like, it's not the actual commercial. It's made specifically for the movie, but it's done in that style. Imagine if it was the Meow Mix song, but but not a song. And they just said meow a lot. They just went, meow, 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 meow. And that was the commercial. And that's literally it. No tune at all. (laughs) Like, they were clearly referencing Meow Mix, but they couldn't legally pay for it. 
<laughs> no, so it was just meow, and it was only meow. And this, so this parrot's like going, meow, 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 meow in yeah. the same, yeah, in the same kind of jingle way uh, that the actual commercial was. And that makes all of the dogs go buck wild. And that's when the bird who has learned the meow, meow, meow thing yeah. escapes meow, meow, meow. out the gate and starts screaming meow 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 which immediately sets off all the dogs right yeah so like the, the omen bird and right. omen child lead the dogs away like pied piper i'm, like, I'm like, actually like, seriously thinking this is some sort of weird pied piper horror thing it has to be yeah no so the, the bird happens. leaves and then the child chases it and then all the dogs chase them and we get this the first like actual good scene from the family part of things where it's a little bit more action like things happen oh yeah yeah because yeah, it's like the dog's all running around and, like, causing damage at the local fair kind of thing. Or, like, some farmer's market style, like, outdoor bazaar. I don't know. They were just kind of stalls everywhere, just on the small town. But they were, like, running through, just trashing everything. The weird part about this scene was that they did set up a very clear thing to be paid off. And they kind of didn't. So they had a vase... That, like, as all the dogs were running through, they start trembling the ground, and the vase is rocking back and forth, and it has really, really clearly on the front of it, $500 in, like, this huge yellow kind of, like, post-it note. And we'd seen earlier that she needed $600 for this trip, and, like, she'd raised most of the money. So, like, really clearly setting it up, like, oh, they're gonna break this vase, she's gonna have to pay for it, and that's where all her money goes. And... The dogs race through, and finally the vase flies into the air. I also like that nobody has been angry about this yet. Oh, that's five hundred dollars. Remember, we had the, the big dog's thing gonna on it. catch it. Oh wait, he's gonna he hit gonna it back. Like, Fuck it. What? 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 Oh what? my god! What? Oh my! I'm. And then Buddy catches it with his head. Well, he just... Okay, you say catch. <laughs> let's let's go back a second. Buddy does okay. not catch does the not vase catch, with his no. head. It goes over his head, completely engulfing it. And he is wearing yes. it like a ceremonial fucking mask. <laughs> yes. That yeah, is I was wondering how they were going to... I was <laughs> hoping that they were going to do like some actual like puppetry where they're basically going to like grab it with his paws i thought that's when they were going to introduce the volleyball he's going to like set the vase volleyball set it and then it lands on like a mattress that's randomly on the side or something dumb but okay, it yeah. was even I was dumber than that. that would happen yeah it was really good it was so bad and like and then suddenly she's just paying them all for the damages anyways which yeah does make sense but in the logic of the movie it doesn't because there was such a clear setup and then the payoff just is kind of like Oh, never mind, he actually caught that? Oh, but, oh, we still need her to lose the money. Um, yeah. okay, well, I guess she pays the, all the other people. And it's like... I guess? Yeah, it felt I guess, so thrown but, together. Yeah, it just didn't make sense. Like, there's a lot of little things like that where it's like, they've got the setup and payoff, and it's there, but it's done in a really weird way that makes it so that it removes all of the tension and all of the setup. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it just... There's like a it's setup there, writing, and it's like a payoff, but it's not quite a payoff. It just kind of peters out oddly. So yeah, that, there's a lot of that in this movie, and that was like kind of like the most basic, perfect example of it. Eventually, we're now 21 minutes into this movie, and we finally had, like, it was around here that they also get introduced, like, to the neighbor boy, who is Screech 2. They've cloned oh, many Screeches. Sports they Screech is my favorite Screech. Screech. Real talk. <laughs> I love Sports Screech. I, I mean, I hate Sports Screech, but at, at times Sports Screech has a chance to shine, and he goddamn takes it. We're, we're introduced to Sports Screech, but it's kind of an unimportant scene. It's just a, oh, boy next door, haha, and then that's it. It's basically pointless other than he skateboards and carries a volleyball everywhere. And carries a volleyball. volleyball. Yeah, like the movie. And he's wearing like a jersey. Like they basically do everything possible to have this boy be sports guy. Like I'm surprised he didn't also have like a baseball glove on and like yeah. a, hat, a hat that said like that hey, he worked for Timberwolves or I'm something. A sports like, you know man. I, mean? I like sports. Yo, you ever played volleyball? I played volleyball. I even skateboard when I played volleyball. Yo, skateboard and volleyball player here. My name's Screech. <laughs> they did so many sports Jesus. things with him. Like, 
they made him such a sports guy. And the best thing was, as I feel like they had to do that, because this is like the scrawniest, nerdiest kid to be sports guy. He doesn't guy. look like a sports it guy was, at all. No. no. So I think that they were just like, throw more sports at this kid. Like, we gotta make him more sports. He's not the sports guy yet. Who hired this kid? So they just have to slap as many sports things on him as they can at all times. A- after we're introduced to Sports Screech... There's like three different scenes I I just wrote family shit. <laughs> but but in between them, we get a special guest appearance by Chevy Chase's Chocho from Karate yes. Dog. <laughs> oh man, it was for like so, five frames. This is our first <laughs> example of something that definitely was a problem with this film, where it felt like they filmed it and then they realized they had nowhere near enough footage to actually make a film. And so they went back and did reshoots because it is all like really bad green screens and reshoots and stuff. Yeah. They have this small dog that I think is Buddy's like wife kind of thing. I don't know, like his dog uh, wife. I think but it's I just feel the like... neighbor's dog that she's dog sitting. I don't think it actually Maybe, means I don't... anything. So there's a another dog there, this little dog, and it's like a, a little like Shih Tzu kind of, like that style of dog, some kind of breed like that. Kind of like most and... of the performances in this movie. <laughs> yes. But there's this little dog, and it goes to run towards the grandma that we get introduced to, neighbor grandma. Yeah. And as it's running for about five seconds, I caught it. There is this hard cut to a different, much larger dog. Totally different. <laughs> like a whole different like breed. A not even dog vaguely close. Too. It is exactly the same dog as in the karate dog, though. Yeah. It is che- absolutely Chevy they Chase. They might have used the same model. Like, I, I was surprised oh. that Chevy Chase was not in the credits. I am so dead set that that was Chevy Chase. <laughs> I like that you think that Chevy Chase was the dog. <laughs> no, I'm glad that's like in your mind. In my head, Chevy Chase is the... now this dog. Yes. That is <laughs> how that works. They had to get him, Chevy Chase himself, no, to mo it. They didn't get the animation. <laughs> they got Chevy Chase to come on set and not say anything for five frames so they can put that in the movie. I just imagine the Chevy Chase in a mocap suit running across the green screen to look like a dog. <laughs> And then, do you want me to say anything? I can no. say, look at the chassis on that lassie. Chevy, no, no, shut thanks. the fuck up. <laughs> no, this is a Disney film, sir. Please shut up. We don't need any of your shit in this movie. <laughs> Just run across the green screen. God damn it. <laughs> Who hired this asshole? <laughs> Dude, we need I didn't know that Chevy Chase was the original Andy Serkis. <laughs> featuring, they should have put that on the box, not featuring the voice of Chevy Chase. I would have been more interested. <laughs> well, wow, why is Chevy Chase not in this film? To be fair, there's a much better chance of the film being good without Chevy Chase in it. <laughs> oh, God. I'm, 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 I'm all for movies that don't start Chevy Chase after Karate I'm, Dog. I'm dying. Oh, God. <laughs> Okay, I, okay, okay. That five frame scene was so good. Uh, it was then, really solid. After a lot more family shit that no one cares about. This is what the family movie is. <laughs> like, ten seconds of glorious, real bad reshoots and stuff. And then, like, a bunch of garbage that you just do not care about at all. Oh, man. This is why we have to talk so long about, like, these very oh. few scenes because the rest of this is just so bland oh. it's all of them just being like well i hope i can go and see my friend oh when are you gonna go see her friend and then like the kid going and getting ice cream so in here there's a little like i i wouldn't even know if i call it a subplot this is just the way of them to get baskin robbins in every frame there are of this so movie many ice cream scenes. so yeah, what it was is, like, the kid runs Airbud through, like, a, a course to win a contest, like, like, like a dog run course kind of thing, and he wins the contest, and because of that, he wins, like, free lifetime ice cream or that, something? That's like, just so wins... they can shoehorn ice cream at any moment. Yeah. So, like, that's, that's what that so much for. of this is, is. It's, like, montages of this the, kid going I, and getting ice cream with the dog. I and, do like, want to point out that yeah. the dogs in that race scene are adorable. Yes. No, all like, the dogs, all the dogs, all the dogs are, adorable. are adorable in this movie. Like, every There's dog. Not nearly enough of them, though. That's part of the problem, is that it's, like, 
they'll be doing all of this family stuff for like 10 minutes and then we'll go, oh, 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 um, oh man, we haven't showed the dog in a while. And it'll just hard cut to a close up of the dog watching them doing it. And that's all that it is for most of the family stuff. Like for a very, very long time, it would just be them doing family things with little like five second cuts of dog being there just watching it. It's like they forgot about the dog and then they're like, yeah. oh shit, we need to edit that in. <laughs> I forgot. Oh my god, dog movie's still here, yeah. <sighs> Anyways, Ugh. after all the family shit and the bland performances and bad line delivery mm-hmm. of literal nothingness and kid shit happening, our two friends finally come back into the movie and we are reintroduced to Wolverine and the Blob as they are now trying to steal not only Buddy, but also the Parrot because they want to get both of them for some reason, so they can steal the gem. Yeah, if, in case you didn't remember, this is actually a heist film. <laughs> the so whole movie we is involving this, too. and I don't remember anything else that's yeah. important. <laughs> no. <laughs> this was 40 minutes, like, between these two scenes. Yeah. Like, they had the, the setup for the heist, and then it was like, I think that this happened at 35 well, minutes in. But anyway, so we're ripped back to this heist scene. And suddenly we're we're back in heist movie, and now they're taking the bird because, because the they're bird doing an old away, lady right? who's yeah they're doing an yeah. old old lady who swallowed the fly situation. See, they need the dog to get the gem, and they need the bird to get the dog. Yeah. <laughs> so like they just like they're going down this chain of how to like steal the dog. But yeah, so they actually have a chase scene with the bird kind of thing. Yeah, they steal the bird, and then we don't see them for another like twenty minutes again, and. We do get a okay. We get a couple good moments. There's the moment where weird grandma makes really weird sandwiches, and yes. it's kind of gross. And I don't know why it's in there other than for a weird quirk. But she has yeah, like was... a raisin sandwich and an asparagus sandwich for no reason. Yeah, like it was like raisin and butter or yeah, mayonnaise raisin and or butter something. Butter and mayo like... and like lettuce or something. I don't. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's a Midwest thing. I'm from the Midwest though, and I don't know that. So, it was I'm so lost. just we need something to make this a character and so yeah. i guess that she makes wacky bad sandwiches and and we're also thankfully blessed with the scene where sports screech throws a fucking volleyball through a second story window <laughs> yes. and hits girl one in the head as she's sleeping while cute dog is next to her <laughs> so good yeah this was this is the one moment where sports screech shines it's amazing so we have i want to set up this whole scene because it's gold it's she's started to learn volleyball kind of thing and he's going to wake her up but like we don't really know that yet she's just laying in bed we get the start of this and she's kind of got like a soft smile on her face as the sun filters through her window and touches her face and then just like a close-up of her face and she kind of gets a little smile like she's waking up. Did, did they get enough money to go to California? Oh. Flashback! Flashback! A flashback happened! Flashback. Fucking write it! All right, finally. What? <laughs> oh my god, that definitely counts as hurt by volleyball. That was amazing! <laughs> Holy shit! What? I mean, that was the best part of this movie. <laughs> Holy fuck, he no scope that bitch. Yeah, he did. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Like, fucking love That's some wanted shit. <laughs> and then, just boom! She just gets nailed in the face of this volleyball. And you cut to outside where Screech is like on the ground floor looking way up at her. Yeah. And he nailed her. Just he fucking beamed her. He wanted this volleyball into her face. Like, oh he no scoped her through this window on the second floor from like where it's like almost straight vertical and then straight sideways there, it's there's so no good. way he could have seen in no no not there, at all there's absolutely no way he even could have known she was there but he there was had definitely to be a... waiting boinks there had to be a second spiker <gasps> it's a conspiracy <laughs> there's, a whole, there's a whole thing there had Check to the be grass the angles don't work <laughs> The angles don't work. Wait, there had get, to be someone else. I need else. to get more yarn for my whiteboard. One second. It had there's to be second, Buddy. There it had a, to be Buddy from the treehouse. There's a second spiker. There's an open child and a demon bird. Oh my god. So this girl gets assassinated. Oh She's god. just dead. She is murdered by this volleyball yeah. from this child. And then she just gets up, looks out the window, and is like, oh yeah, yeah all right. 
<laughs> yeah. Like, right. I just like, yeah, and it seems just means nothing. She just gets up <laughs> and goes outside. And we don't get, we, then we just get scenes of her playing volleyball for 30 There's minutes. There's like 20 to 30 minutes of montage of volleyball <sighs> learning to play the game bullshit. Yeah, there's a scene of her trying out and not being very good at the game. And this is her this is the start of her second arc. There's this whole scene of her like being not very good at the game and then they're kind of like, "Oh, well, like everybody else is doing pretty okay, but man, she really doesn't know how to volleyball." So I thought that it was going to be that Airbud would have to time in for her. Um it, we I'm actually wrong on that. I ended up being wrong. Somebody else gets injured kind of thing or leaves. No, they leave. It's some random character we've never heard of just leaves. <laughs> Yeah, She's out. yeah, but what we're getting ahead of ourselves anyway. So there's a scene of her sucking, and then like immediately after that, they have like this scene of her practicing and sucking, and then they go to like another scene of their first game where she's again shown sucking, and everybody's like mad at her for being bad. And it's like there's so much stretched out there because we already had a montage setting up that she's bad at volleyball. Okay, we get it, that's the setup, and then they just go like, oh man, we need another five minutes, let's set this up again. And all of these volleyball scenes are, they actually had a beach and they did a lot of it at the beach, but then they did a lot of just reusing the same clips over and over and over and over and over. Like they had, it's 20 to 30 minutes of montage volleyball stuff of them at the beach, but they really did that off of about five minutes of actual footage and just kept reusing the same reaction clips and stuff over and over they they did do that but they also reshot a bunch of scenes on green yes. screens later yeah so exactly to pad it then even they, further yeah. yeah to pad it even more they had this beach location they had done it and like i feel like they had to have just been done the whole movie and been like oh my god this is like 40 minutes what are we gonna do and so they just went back and just, like, added all of this extra green screen stuff just to pad the runtime. Like, it was like, uh, it's like a university student suddenly, like, getting a page into their essay and realizing that they need more and then starting, like, double spacing and, like, right. do you know what I mean? Like, halfway through, they start but, doing that. I mean, that. You've, done, you've done that before, really right? Weird. Like, in Word, this was a trick I learned in college. In Word, you can actually change the size of the period to one size higher, and it looks the exact same from 12 to 14, but it's spaced out slightly further, extending your... Yeah, your exactly. They kind of started doing all of did. these little tricks like that. Yeah, I fucking hate just, it. But way more obviously. Yeah. Way more obviously, because the they green even screen the is the same terrible. green screen scenes, too. Like, yes. Jesus. Yeah, even that they but reused. They, they eventually add in Buddy to the team, because reasons. Yeah, you call this the loophole, but I don't want to call it that. Because, like, there's... For the loophole to work. So what I mean by the loophole is that it's like, there's nothing in the rules that says a dog can't play basketball. And they kind of get the setup for that, but then they don't do it. What they do is she's like, oh, I know somebody who can play basketball. And then she runs off, and they show Omen Child yeah, from tottering through. Child. And all of the kids are, the like, kids are like, oh, like, oh no. God, no, not the Omen they Child. They can't be oh, serious. Jesus. And then they show the grandma coming through, and they're like, oh, even worse. And then they show the dog, and all the kids go, yay, this makes total sense. And it's like, wait. What? Wait, does it? <laughs> does this make sense? They just passed on the two actual human people and settled on dog. Like, human? No, nah, can't be that person. Oh, human? No, nope, no, nope, can't be that. Dog, yes. Dogs play volleyball. That's yep. perfect. Yep. And Everybody just accepts this. All the, like, opponents' teams accept this. Like, the coach accepts it immediately. No, okay. They're just like, oh, the dog hold plays on, volleyball. Okay, on. sure. You called him the coach. You called him the coach. That is yes. Ska coach. That is not just <laughs> any old coach. That coach listens to Ska, goes out to the concert hall afterwards, and gets his skanking shoes on, and fucking listens to Real Big Fish. You know goddamn well that's what he does. He was half skanking in every scene that you, he was you in. You call him Ska coach. And That's you true. And you like gotta it. call him Scott Coach every time. God damn it. Oh, he was real <laughs> weird. He was trying... So, like, the characters, the main yeah. children are all so bad at oh, acting. Oh, they're terrible. And they're so flat. No, they're, Sports they're not Screech all is, terrible. They're not all terrible. Sports Screech has a little bit of it. Sports Screech. Like you want to know who was actually the good child actor? It was the character that left ten minutes into the movie. The yes, friend yeah, the, that moved to California. That was the good actor in this film. Yeah, that was she child. was much better. But they're all really, really flat. And so then when you yeah. suddenly have this guy who's really flamboyant ska coach next to them, it's 
so off-putting. It's real weird. Scott Coach loves puns, too, by the way. Mm. <laughs> mm. Scott Coach. Ever gotta love Scott Coach. Oh, man. But yeah, they, they get Buddy in the most ridiculous way possible, and they're all fine with it. And there's not a loophole. They're just like, oh, yeah, a dog. All right, let's add him to... <laughs> It just, it just happens, and, and we immediately just go back to volleyball shots again, and this oh. is where they get really egregious with the green right. screen. I, like, I wrote down, I wrote down, this is definitely volleyball, which means there yeah. was at least 20 minutes of volleyball, to the point where after 20 minutes of volleyball, we were like, man, can we just go back to the family shit no one cares about? <laughs> yeah, I, well, we had talked, like, it took 21 minutes right? of this film to see the first volleyball, and then it took, like, another 20-plus minutes for us to actually get to, like, the dog playing it yeah. at all. And then we are immediately like, okay, there we go. We finally did it. We've gotten to Spike's back. There's volleyball stuff happening. And then 10 minutes after that, we're like, oh, God, please let the volleyball <laughs> stuff in. And it went on for another 30 minutes of volleyball it stuff. Like, going. it just kept going forever. All right. Forever and ever. We're, like, an hour 10 in? Hour yes. 15? At an hour 15 in, we are finally reintroduced to the best part of the movie, which is Wolverine and the Blob finally getting back to their goddamn heist for this dumb thing we forgot about. Our (laughs) X-Men heist movie finally happens again. Oh my god. You always forget that there's a heist movie in here because there's so much garbage in between it, and then the heist movie happens, and you're like, yeah, heist movie, I forgot, this is is great. It's so dumb. It's amazingly dumb. It is absolutely dumb and dumber too, by the way. Oh, like it's so good. It's yeah. like a mixture of home dog home alone with dumb and dumber. <laughs> like yeah, the, yeah. so they go and they catch Buddy with using the, the bird. parrot. Yeah. Yes. So they it, like they have knows the how parrot to meow. meow. Yep. I guess. I don't yeah, know why and so he runs after it. But alright. This kinda meow, seems meow, like meow, it's meow, meow, you know this bird? Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Like, uh, oh my old lady God, who swallowed faces. the... <laughs> it's so good. This is, like, Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> it's totally... We're in the home stretch now, Gordon! <laughs> yeah, that was, like, a big plot point that all the dogs run after the bird when it and, meows. And, and, and then, so they did that. And, and they then they the take dog. the dog to the museum, hiding it underneath a tarp. With this very clearly fake tail <laughs> sticking out as they go past the a so sleeping good. Paul Blart mall cop with a fucking sandwich on his chest. Because, of course, Paul Blart mall cop. Ma- Paul Blart mall cop? Paul Blart mall cop. Mall Blart call blop. The lol the lo- <laughs> call mall blop. All right. Look. <laughs> I have a beer and a half in. All right. <laughs> so, so Quad Blop, Blow a Blop, goes yes. and he's sleeping there and they kind of move it past him. They've got this really fake tail going and then they pull off the tarp off of Buddy and everybody just knows that this dog, this dog is just a person. Like right. they just talk to him. They go, okay, if you want to see your parent alive again, you've got to go through the vents and steal the gem for us. And they just explain it to him in English and he just gets it. He's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Got to do it. Well, the, the parrot's a hostage. Well, like he fully understands our world. It's amazing. But yeah, so this dog just gets, it gets everything. Like this dog is super dog. It has every ability. It's incredible. So they threaten they treat the dog, to... right? Yes. With yeah. the, cause they're going to, kill the parrot if the dog doesn't do their mission impossible shit and steal the diamond they get the dog to go through a vent it goes to the other side past the lasers and then has an existential moral quandary about if it should do crime or not yeah it really does like it this is incredible this is why i love it so much like this dog is just a person like it's so wild because it's it pauses like it goes to reach for the gym and then it's like and looks back uh, at the guys, I, and then it like flashbacks to the cop. Basically, yeah. it's like, oh no, like I can't do this. It's <laughs> against the good boy code. Am oh. I gonna be a bad boy? Uh, so good. So, so our good boy is a bad boy, but he's extremely adorable and getting back through those lasers. So it's okay. Yeah, I love. That oh they my said- god, it's so cute. It's great the way that they do this scene that they have to get this dog so that it can go through the vents because there's all this laser grid and you can't go through the lasers. So the dog goes through the vents and grabs the gem 
And then they're like, okay, now come back through the lasers. And it's like, wait. What? But what? <laughs> like, yeah. The whole point of this was that you couldn't get through the damn lasers. And I was really mad at that for about like 10 seconds. And then the, they had the scene of like the dog like rolling under lasers, like crawling over them. And it was the most adorable stuff. Like none of it's CGI. It's all actual dog. Like, I mean, the lasers are just added in effects, uh, they're right? They're definitely added like, in. Well, the dog but, has but, like, something the dog to climb is over, though. They, they, yeah, they, like, they must have pulled a, a string or something for the dog it, to go over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, they've, it's like an actual dog doing, like, little cute dog tricks. We're, yeah. like, invited to this scene. It's, it's a dumb setup for the scene, but, man, the dog's adorable. I loved it. It was great. There was no problem with that. The, the so it does, escapes, like, this whole Mission Impossible right? thing through it. Yes. The bird actually pulls itself free, though, while they're watching the dog. And then the dog, like is allowed to escape yeah uh, to be so, fair i would also watch the dog in that scenario because it was yes. adorable <laughs> oh no it was but, amazing but, it was so adorable yeah the parrot gets away and starts meowing and of course meowing sets off dogs which was previously known in the scene where all the dogs ran through town causing an evil havoc because of satan and yes the dog runs off with the gem and our two heroes <laughs> We'll free yes. them the blob. <laughs> heroes. Absolutely. Heroes Absolutely our heroes. They saved, this, they saved movie. this movie. They were superheroes because saving this movie <laughs> is a superhero effort. Yes. They were they, amazing. They, but, like, the dog actually jumps so up. You good. missed kind of the best part about that scene, oh, really? though. Because, like, well, he goes, the, the parrot meows. And Airbud like, jumps up and, like, shoves the guy's head into the lasers. Oh, yeah. They have this, like, great slapstick moment of that. Like, bounces his head off the floor and it wakes up Paul Blart. And then they have this whole chase scene of, like, Maul Blart. Maul Blart. Paul Blart? And... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Running down the streets, like, chasing <laughs> after them. And them chasing after the dog. And... and then they go to the carnival, which was set up earlier. And, and this is where it's dog home alone. Yeah. It's so good because the dog it's is so great. fucking sadistic in this scene. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, and this is where you finally got to check off cartoon shit. Cartoon we shit. We had waited happened. so long for it to happen, but it finally did. It was absolutely wacky, over the top cartoon shit. They go on this little kid's carousel, and the dog starts, like, cranking it up to, like, super fast and spinning them around faster and faster just to, like, Not I don't only know. Not super fast. Busy. They go fast, then they go super fast, and then they go to plaid. What? Although I did oh, like this is amazing! Like... He's gonna oh. start- This is so good! I love this. <laughs> it's way better than the rest. Oh my god, he's doing shit! This is cartoon shit for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this definitely counts as cartoon shit. I feel like... So is the dog now home alone them? Yes! Like, is that what's going is. on? Like, this is the dog home alone now. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, why dog? That is a super cartoon shit now. <laughs> I kind of feel like Wolverine should have a mullet, but he doesn't. Like, That's the very, character very, looks very like cartoon it. shit. Oh my god, this is... <laughs> I was expecting way more of this in the movie, but they saved it all for the act. It would have been a way better movie if there was more of this. Yeah. It's really dumb, but, like, it's fine. So this dog is an incredible genius. Yeah. Just like Ty Tuesday. Boy genius. <laughs> but he's a dog idiot, and this dog is not an idiot. Because yes. it's so fast that they're spinning in a pattern that creates a plaid picture on screen. Just like fucking space balls. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then the dog immediately stops them. They fly off. And one of them literally vomits on the other. Which I can't <laughs> even say because it's like fucking ridiculous. I really thought they were going to start doing like <laughs> both of them vomiting back and forth on each other. This setup was there. This extended yep. scene of them vomiting all over each other in this gross out moment. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't didn't. believe that they actually zoomed in on the vomit on him oh after it. Just covered in vomit. I didn't couldn't believe they went there. Oh. I thought they might like have them do like a But like they just go for the whole gross out. It was wonderful. But like the dog knows to press the emergency <laughs> brake and everything. The dog, like the dog 
dog is just fucking with the. <laughs> it's got like this whole thing, and then it runs directly to the cop. There's this ancient sheriff. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Played by an actor that you know, uh, Patrick Ch- Cranshaw was his yeah. name. The guy who played Blue in Old School and was also the hobo in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yes, and that so guy. the dog runs directly to him and gives him the gem. And like, then there's another horror fucking Satan like vision moment. <laughs> what? Yes. what? Where, yeah, where the, the guys are really dizzy, so they're seeing everyone in multiples, and the cops like. St- Stop, like, I've got you. But then, like, the Omen kid's on the other side, and they run and see him, and they go, oh, God, we're surrounded. We should point out that Patrick Cramshaw is, like, 90 years old and stumbling after them. And it's really embarrassing, but, man, that seems great. (laughs) Yeah, this whole scene is really awesome. They get caught. It's way better than most of the movies. That whole heist was completely pointless. There was no actual issue at all that related to the main story other than that buddy was gone for a little bit so they were losing the game but then buddy joins back and then they win the game and then they get money to go to california and then the whole format changes because they're no longer playing in teams and there's doubles and then the movie ends for no reason that was air bud five and we need to rate some dogs in this movie i have a couple dogs that we need to rate first of all Buddy, mm-hmm. if you were unaware, was only a single dog in the first Airbud movie. In every other Airbud movie through Airbud Five, it was a random assortment of various golden retrievers. So yeah, it is rate... the hive mind that calls yes. itself Buddy. We need to rate the hive mind <laughs> that is Buddy. I would rate the hive mind that is Buddy a thirteen out of ten because every time that golden retriever is actually on the screen, which is few and far between. It is fucking adorable. <laughs> and, yes, this and dog is the fantastic. Mission Impossible scene alone is worth seeing for the dog. Oh, God, yeah, that scene is wonderful. This dog is fantastic. Well, these dogs. Yeah. These, these dogs, dogs this... that are conglomerate of one dog. <laughs> <laughs> a a bud of mind, dogs, as you might say. This hive mind esque dog horror is yeah. by far one of the best things in this movie and is it's super adorable every time that it's on scene. Whether it's playing sports, whether it's doing like the whole Mission Impossible heist scene, mm. or just like eating ice cream. Like they knew to try and put the dog everywhere. They didn't do as good of a job of it as they should, but yeah, at least the dog had some good scenes. That was nice. Alright. How would you rate it though? The movie? No, the dog. I, mean, I would have to not give, give a number if you want. I, I, I have to give this dog, like, uh, I don't know. I'm going to give it only uh, 11 out of 10 because it did go back and snitch. Like, it's a good <laughs> dog. But, like, hey, listen, it snitched. Wolverine and Blob were the best people in this movie. They were our heroes. And this dog fucking betrayed them. It stabbed them in the back. They were just two down-home guys looking to make a big score. Oh, this dog just God. couldn't help them out for five goddamn minutes and just give them the gym and then walk away. All right. What did it have at stake? It just was a snitch. I'm going to have to dock the points <laughs> for that. 11 out of 10. No, I'm going 9 out of 10. Nine this out is a Jesus. decent This is a decent dog, but it's snitch. It, so, it, it, you were it betrayed the two best people dogs. in this film. It betrayed the two best people in this film, and that's not okay. <laughs> It gets dot points for that. It's adorable, but it is a snitch. All right. All right. Second dog is the collection of all of the dogs that appear during the pet sitting moments. Because there are like ten of them. I and honestly can only... And yeah. I, I can only give this a five out of ten. They were just regular dogs, and it was always with Omen Child. It yeah. all was just, like, back and I, forth reaction shots with, like, just this kid playing with them, and I hated that kid so I much. That kid I hated that so much more than so I liked much. the dogs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It dragged everything down with those dogs. It was horrible. Th- those dogs could have really upped their acting skills, and maybe they'll be better in the next film. But I, yeah. I would also I'm, give, like, a 7 out of 10. They were okay. Uh, the maybe next time. mayhem maybe next scene time. from this movie pales in comparison to the mayhem scene in The Karate Dog. The right. mayhem scene in Karate Dog had a lot of really cute stuff with dogs, like, jumping on people and stuff. That's and this one just has them running. It's just kind of bland. And the last dog we have to raid is Chevy Chase. Yes. Chevy Chase appeared in this film, <laughs> and I'm going to have to give Chevy Chase a uh, 
Look at the chassis on that lad out of a lassie. Out of ten. I gotta give him a chassis out of a lassie. That's what I have to rate Chevy Chase. I give him Paul Blart Mall Blart out of ten. <laughs> Would you like to rate this film? No. 